Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18 beta eight iOS 18 beta eight is out to developers. iOS 18 public beta six should be out by the time you're watching this video or sometimes it's the following day. This particular update seems noticeably smoother and faster and more refined. We'll talk about that later, but the overall size came in at 310.4 megabytes on my iPhone 15 pro max. Along with this, Apple also released a ton of different updates, iPad OS 18 beta eight, Mac OS 15 beta eight, TV OS and HomePod OS 18 beta eight, along with vision OS two beta eight and other iOS 18.1 beta three updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22A5350A. This is the second build number to end in the letter A, and typically this update will be much more refined and be the last update before we get the RC or iOS 18 release candidate. Now, as far as new features and changes, well, the first thing is there is no new modem update. We haven't had one in a little while and beta eight has no difference as far as that goes. So we have beta version 2.16.06 on the iPhone 15 series. As far as new features, well, Apple did announce a new feature generally today. So if we go over into the wallet and if we go to driver's license or state ID, we have a new option for Hawaii. We're also waiting for California soon, and this should be rolling out on all devices. So this is not just specific to the iOS. 18 betas. We also have really not a whole lot of changes from last time. We have some things to talk about with the phone where they haven't changed this back. So if we go into phone under recents, we have the same sort of layout we've had for years. And if we search, we now have that sort of new icon look on the right hand side. They haven't actually changed this back to what we had a couple betas ago that many people actually appreciated. The emoji keyboard is also the same in this update. So they rolled it back a few betas ago and it looks like they're sticking with this sort of update overall. As far as wallpapers, if we go in, press and hold here, and then we go to add a wallpaper and then we scroll down, you can see here that we don't have the iPhone 15 pro models or anything else. As far as those wallpapers go, they're missing now and Apple still hasn't brought them back. They've also not replaced them in specific areas throughout the OS. So if we go into settings and then we go to display and brightness, we still have the older wallpaper. So Apple still needs to update this. They probably would will with the RC version. Other things to mention are basically splash screens at this point. We'll talk about bugs and refinements in a moment, but we had a splash screen for maps, introducing hikes and custom routes. We also have a splash screen for voice memos for home. We also have one for translate and much of this is repeated from previous betas, but they continue to do this. And then we had one for fitness as well as journal. And then we had a little reading goals icon that popped up in books here. So it says quickly find your daily reading progress streaks and more. And then we had one for free for, and then Apple news. So lots of different ones here for iOS 18 beta eight, as we get closer to the final release. As far as notable bug fixes, well, one thing they've definitely fixed has to do with weather. So if we go into the weather app, and for those of you wondering, this is actually the app called Mercury. It's a paid app that I just like the overall widgets for, but let's go into weather here. If we go into the regular weather app and then we zoom out a little bit, you'll see precipitation is now working properly. It just takes a moment to load. And if we switch over to air quality, everything is working with the maps this time around. So it looks like they've finally fixed this. It looks a little bit better and things have been updated with that. As far as other fixes, well, it looks like there's not a whole lot more that they've mentioned here. As far as bugs that are going on, well, I'm still having an issue with the tips app I've shown you before. So if we go into tips, it will just sit here and load. Sometimes it loads right away like this and takes a few seconds. Other times it can just sit here and wait and wait and wait, and then we'll finally load or just crash altogether. So it's still an issue this time. It came up much faster, but it's still an issue from time to time. If I close out, go back in. Well, now it seems to be working, but again, sometimes it's a problem as far as the overall wallpaper bug. Well, that's still here. So you'll see here down at the bottom, we'll get rid of this and you'll see at the bottom, it actually desaturates when I go to the home screen. Now it looks a little bit better than it did before. It's easier to see on vibrant wallpapers, but it's still there. And I tested it on this device a little bit. As far as overall storage, some people have asked me to check that. So if we go into general and then we go down to 
iPhone storage here. Give it a second to load. You'll see it loaded nice and fast. And it's using 11.27 gigabytes for iOS and only 1.07 gigabytes for system data. Now this can go up and down. It's typical to sort of have that be used as cash. It will go up and down as needed. That's sort of why it's at the bottom. But some people are saying that it's restored a lot of data for them as far as overall storage and things have actually been a little bit better so far with beta eight. So far I have not experienced the standby bug. So this has been repaired for me or fixed for me for quite some time. Now this time around, Last time with the previous beta, it was definitely much smoother than before. It looks like they've resolved the issues they had with it. And I haven't heard since that people are having problems with it. So if we go back and forth, it seems to be nice and fast. So it looks like they've finally resolved that. Let me know if you're seeing any problems with that, if you're using it. As far as the overall release notes, well, if we go ahead and go into the feedback app, we'll go in here. We'll go into recent activity or let's go into the inbox. It looks like they haven't updated it here yet, but if we go onto the public facing website and if we go to view the release notes here, give it a second to load, I've gone through this and it looks like they're basically again, the same release notes we had with beta seven, which were the same as beta six. They really should get rid of all of these every single time there's new documentation and tell us what's new in the latest beta, not sort of reiterate things that we already know are resolved. This doesn't help us when we report feedback. And if you do have bugs and you're having issues, this isn't updated. So we don't know if they've resolved it or not. There are a lot of resolved issues in here, but they actually haven't specified what it is this time around as far as anything new with the latest beta. As far as the overall performance, well, like I said earlier, it seems noticeably smoother and more refined. And I'll show you that a little bit later with the benchmark scores, but things such as ProMotion or just going into the control center. And this is with a 14 pro max. If we go in and we just scroll between them, it seems to be a little bit quicker and just sort of speed up a little faster. So if we go in and sort of edit, go to add a control, of course, it's going to be nice and smooth now, but you can see on the left, it's a little bit choppy for whatever reason, it seemed to be much faster on the latest beta as we get closer to the final release with the refinements. As far as the overall heat, well, it is processing a lot in the background, but it seems to be noticeably cooler than it was last time. It's going to process for a few days and that will typically be shown in battery. At least it was last time for me. So if we go into the main screen here under settings and go to battery, once we let it load, I love that they show this where it says update finishing in the background. You can use your iPhone as you normally would while a recent software update finishes. This could take a while battery life and thermal performance may improve once finished. So Apple's aware of this. They're letting us know that it's using a lot of power and also warming up the phone as it's using the processor more. If we go into the last nine days, well, I have to say iOS 18 beta seven was pretty good. It was getting me through the day where iOS 18.1 betas were not. So I switched over to this. You'll see, I have my SIM card in this one. And if we go to the battery usage here, we have three hours and 21 minutes of screen active time yesterday. And I used about 70% of the battery and two hours and 34 minutes of screen idle time today. So far, two hours and 32 minutes of screen active time. And I've only used about 26% of the battery based on my current battery. It's doing much better. And hopefully it gets even better now that we're getting closer to that final release. My current battery health is at 100% with 50 cycles on this device. iOS 18.1 is on a different device that I used for a long time and is down to about 91 or 92%. I'll show you that in another video once we have the iOS 18.1 beta three video. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18 beta eight at this point, typically I say, if you have to ask that question because you're concerned of bugs and battery life, then I would skip it. However, at this point, it seems more refined, much better, but I would wait for iOS 18 public beta six based off of what we've known in the past. That's when Apple sort of deems it stable enough. I'd wait for that version. Try that out. As long as you have a backup of your phone, if you don't, well, then I might skip it until you have a backup, whether that's on your phone or on a computer, as you cannot roll back without a computer. Now, Apple did announce the Apple event date this week with iPhone 16, 16 plus 16 pro and 16 pro max. It's on September 9th at 10 AM Pacific or 1 PM Eastern. And we also expect after this event to have an update on when to expect iOS 18 to release to the public. Now that we know this is on September 9th, based off of that information, we can expect probably a release candidate after the event on the 9th. So we'll probably have a two week gap for that release candidate on the 9th, possibly with a public release, either the following Monday on the 16th or later in the week, I would bet probably the 16th, but it seems like at this point, we don't really know a hundred percent as Apple is changing the overall dates quite a bit lately. 
As far as iOS 18.1 beta four release, I would expect that probably next week as we're probably on a weekly schedule at this point and Apple will want to get Apple intelligence out to the iPhone 16. So maybe we'll get that released pretty quickly, but again, we don't know hundred percent. We also know that iOS 17.6.2 is in the works and we could see that anytime from now until next week and 17.7 .7 typically in September as the final big release for iOS 17 devices. As far as the overall benchmarks, well, I did run those and they seem to be pretty good compared to the previous ones. 2,843 for single core, 6,715 for multi-core. Now I ran this right after installing it, so it will typically go up, but you'll see it's a little bit higher on both single core and quite a bit higher on multi-core. Not as good as the 17.6.1 release, but at this point we have to give it a few days, see what it's like. And of course I'll talk about that on the week on follow-up. I typically publish that on Saturdays. Now, as far as anything else, this update's pretty refined, pretty feature complete. So I don't expect a whole lot of changes here, but if you did find something I didn't mention, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>